This is a 1938 Corona Sterling, and this is what's called a black speed line on here, and this is the original. Gosh, these are wonderful machines, and I love the metal round keys on them. They just feel really fun on your fingertips. But let's go ahead and take a look at it. By the way, this is Laura with Jot and Tittle Typewriter. So glad to have you with me today. Okay, let's flip this forward because right here is where you're gonna set your margins and you just press and drag. Well, I haven't had one of these in a while. It's fun to work on it. You'll also see right here, this is gonna be your paper holder. Kind of looks like a Martian, but that's what it is. Okay, and you'll see on this one that um, the tab is gonna be on the left instead of the right. And the tabs you're gonna find are way back here and there's a metal rod with keys and these keys are pretty stiff. They've been there a long time. They need to be loosened up a bit. But um, you just slide them wherever you want. And voila, that's how you do your tabs. Okay, put that down. Also, this is your carriage for those of you new to typewriters. And to move this carriage, there's a little metal lever on each side. Pull that in and just move it back and forth. That bell tells you you're at the end of your line. It's to let you know to hit this return handle. So you go to the next line. And when you hit this return handle, you have a line selector right here that'll determine if you can advance one or two lines. On the right side, this lever just releases tension on the paper and we're gonna load some paper here in a second and I'll show you how that works. Now I'm gonna move this carriage further over to the left because I wanna open up the top. And inside, you'll see we put in a universal ribbon. So these are not the original ribbon spools, but they're, they're a plastic universal ribbon, fits most typewriters. And you can get extras on our website at jotandtittletypewriters.com. Now all of our typewriters that we sell, we clean them, we put in new ribbons, and we repair them. And then we do these videos to make sure so that you can see how it works before you purchase it. Now, when it is time to change out your ribbon, please make sure it's threaded properly. So I have an up close image of this escapement area. That way you can reference it to see how to load your ribbon. Just make sure black is on top, red is on bottom if you use a two color ribbon. You don't have to, but this typewriter has the option for you to do that. Now our ribbons do not automatically reverse, so you have to manually reverse them with this switch right here and you just go back and forth with that. Okay, now um, this does happen. Sometimes if you purchase the typewriter with us, you'll start typing and you'll realize it's at the end of the spool right away. That's not an old ribbon, it's just because in the typing demo, I've fiddled with it or in packing and shipping that gets switched. Trust me, it's a new ribbon. Just switch the ribbon um, and so that it's going in the proper direction. Now, for those of you who have a, a Corona that looks like this and you wanna know how old it is, your serial number is right here on the right side, stamped into the metal frame, and then you can reference it using an online database. Typewriterdatabase.com is a good place to start. This is like touch control. It just determines how hard these type bars are gonna strike your paper, so however you wanna set that. Down here, again, margin, uh, it's the ribbon reversal. And then this is your color selector, black on top, red on bottom. The white in the middle is a stencil setting. It, it's just not gonna type properly if you have it on that setting. So you wanna make sure, if you're having trouble typing, there's two things you should always check check your ribbon reversal and check your color selector to make sure it's firmly on one of the colors. Okay, let's go ahead and do some typing. So you just set your paper right here, turn the handle, and you can see how crooked I loaded it. So that's where this comes in handy. Just pull that forward and um, I'm gonna make sure, and then straighten it out. And I wanna make sure that these little metal guys here are on top of the paper. Now make sure you re-engage or else it's not gonna advance properly. So there my um, paper is now straight. Let's go ahead and start our typing. So on this one, I'm gonna use the lowercase L for the number one because there's no number one. This is a 1938 
Corona Sterling. Wow, this type's very nice. Beautiful bounce back. I mean, it almost feels like rubber. It's just bouncing right back, which I love to feel. And then the font on the paper, and go to the product listing link that's in the description below. By the way, will you like this video? Thanks. Um, if you go to that link, then you can see an up close image of this paper. And you can see what the font looks like on this. So, um, wow, excellent typing machine. So for all of you um, serious writers out there, this is a good ruminating machine for you. And it almost sounds like a, it's not a silent, it sounds like a silent because it has the clicking noises aren't as loud as you normally you would expect. It has kind of that um, muffled sound that is familiar with the silence, but this is a sterling. And then some of you might notice that on the shift key, it says floating shift. And let me, and it says it down here as well. So let me explain that to you really quick. So most of these older typewriters, when you hit shift, the carriage lifts up and you can actually feel the weight of the carriage when you hit the shift button because you're literally, you know, you're, you're just literally pressing that up and down. Whereas the floating shift moves the actual escapement itself, making it a much smoother action and it's easy on the pinky. Because trust me, when you've been typing for a while and you've hit that shift and you're having to lift that carriage, it starts to hurt. Okay, let's keep typing. Oops, when you make a mistake, you just hit backspace. And you hear that bell, that bell says, hey, you're at the end of your sentence or your line, you need to hit return. So you just hit the return handle. Okay, let's do the red. Oops, sorry. Okay, there's that bell, but I'm gonna keep going this time. Oops. Okay, so it's stopping on me, and the, what you need to do is hit margin release if you wanna keep going. Okay, so this is one of the best typers I've been on in many weeks. Amazing. The only thing I will say is I have very petite hands, and so the keys were a little bit further, and I had to press a little bit farther down than would be comfortable for me to type from home row. Um, I just... I would have to press further and farther down and so it was a little more awkward so I was having to like one and two finger it. So that is the only thing I would say is if you have very petite hands, please keep that in mind that this would be probably harder for you to type on if you wanted to do, you know, home row typing. It would be harder to reach and type with. But as far as ease, oh my goodness, the keystroke on this was so smooth and bouncy and lovely. And I just wish I had a little bit longer fingers so because I think I would just love to type on this typewriter. Anyway, this is a gem. Hope you snatch it up. Thanks so much for watching. Please visit our website at jotandtittletypewriters.com for ribbons and typewriters and typewriter pads and typewriter covers and typewriter art and even some puzzles. All right, y'all have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.